In this video, we're going to go over the function and operation of the main components on your vacuum truck. Also, we're going to go through a daily, weekly, and monthly maintenance checklist to help keep your truck in good operating condition. As all the items on your vacuum truck are mechanical devices, they need good maintenance to help keep them functioning properly, as well as improve the durability and the life of your truck. Preventative maintenance on a daily, weekly, and monthly cycle are commonly ignored, so it's vital to know the importance of general maintenance to keep your pump and truck running for a long time. The rotary vane vacuum pump is an oil lubricated air pump, so it's not meant to have any liquids entering the vacuum pump. If you do get fluid into your pump through the system, you'll end up cleaning out your scrubber, the air lines, the vacuum pump itself. There's a lot of extra maintenance when you do get carryover. So you want to try to prevent that by maintaining your traps properly. The first line of defense we're looking at to protect your pump on the truck system is the primary shutoff trap. That'll be welded into the top of your tank and contains a float ball inside of a cage. So when the liquid level rises, it shuts off the flow of air to the vacuum pump. From your primary trap, if you follow that hose down the tank, that should go to your secondary shutoff trap. This is your next line of defense in case your primary should fail or if you're getting carryover from your tank, slosh it down into the secondary shutoff trap. This will have a float shutoff in it also and is meant to separate liquid from the airstream. It's important to have a secondary shutoff trap in your system because your primary is more likely to clog and fail. So you want the secondary shutoff or your scrubber in the system to help protect the vacuum pump. From the secondary shutoff trap, Next, you'll have your pre-filter. This pre-filter has a stainless steel mesh washable filter element in there. This is to keep fine particulates from entering the vacuum pump and doing some damage that way. It's just like an air filter for your truck engine. You want to protect your, your vacuum pump as best you can and keep any contaminants from getting into it and doing damage to the veins. From the pre-filter, you then go into the valve of the pump. And then on the back side, your exhaust goes into an oil catch muffler or an oil separator. The oil separator is meant to catch the waste oil from the vacuum pump and quiet the pump noise down. And then the exhaust hood, that vents to atmosphere. So you want to make sure that's in a clean, clear place out of the dust and dirt. Because when you're running pressure mode, you're sucking back through the system, through your oil catch muffler, and back into the tank. From the exhaust of your pump, some trucks are fitted with a pump percent deodorizer can. The pump percent is meant to remove foul odors from the airstream on a vacuum truck. This truck is not fitted with a pumper scent system, but we'll take a closer look at that later. The other key components on your uh, vacuum system is your vacuum relief valve, which is meant to protect the vacuum pump. Now, this is an adjustable relief valve that will allow air to be drawn into the pump when you reach a certain vacuum level. Then you're in pressure mode, you have a pressure relief valve. That one is adjustable also, and that's meant to relieve pressure when you're offloading the tank and not overpressurize the pump. Every vacuum pump has a limit on its maximum continuous vacuum and pressure, so you want to ensure you know what your pump can do and make sure these are adjusted properly before you operate the pump. This is a combination vacuum pressure gauge, so it will read in inches of mercury for vacuum and then PSI for pressure. The vacuum pumps are oil lubricated, so you'll have a remote oil tank on your truck in a convenient place where it's easy to fill, easy to see your oil level. The oil reservoir has a single line which flows to the vacuum pump. It's a gravity feed oil system. So this line will feed your oil pump, which lubricates the vacuum pump. Fitted in line is an oil filter to help keep contaminants from getting into the oil pump itself. The oil is the lifeblood of your pump. So making sure your oiling system is functioning properly is critical to keeping your pump in operation. Next in line would be the drive system on the truck. The drive system on your truck is what controls the speed and rotation of the pump. Certain truck models may have a top mounted pump that's hydraulically driven. There's various trucks that are mounted direct PTO driven inside the frame rail. This particular truck has a PTO driven right angle gearbox setup. You can't really see it here, but we'll take a look at that later. On the bench here, we have the drive system and your pumper scent vaporizer chamber. The drive system is what controls the speed, torque, and rotation of your vacuum pump. The pumper scent, this is the deodorizer for your exhaust system to get rid of any foul odors off the truck. Next, we'll take a look at maintenance of the components on your vacuum truck. As 
part of your daily checks before you operate the truck, you always want to ensure your oil reservoir is topped off and make sure you have a gallon of oil on the truck with you so you can get throughout the day without having to stop and add oil to it. The oil is critical because that's what's lubricating your vacuum pump and keeping it operating. If you don't have enough oil, we recommend using Massport vacuum pump oil. It's specifically designed for our vacuum pumps. It's dyed blue so it's easy to see in the reservoir and easy to see in your oil lines on the vacuum pump. Next up on your checklist, you want to ensure that you're draining your scrubber and oil catch mufflers to ensure that you're starting the day with them empty. They're fitted with a ball valve drain at the bottom of the tank on each one and just ensure you have a bucket underneath and drain those out before you start your day. The scrubber tank, you want to ensure that's empty because if there's partial amounts of liquid in the tank, that can actually draft through and get sucked through your vacuum pump. Before you start your day, you want to ensure the pump's operating properly. So we're going to go through startup procedure on it and just checking your relief valve settings. First thing you want to do is put your valve handle in the neutral position to make sure the tank's bled off and you're not starting the pump under a load. From there, you're going to go ahead and engage your PTO. Move your pump handle into the vacuum mode. Let the pump build vacuum and then check your gauge to see where your vacuum relief valve is set. Now this will take some time because you have to let it build up vacuum and then listen for your vacuum relief valve to pop off. Once you check that setting, you want to move the valve handle back to neutral and bleed the vacuum off the tank and then slowly put it into the pressure mode. From there, you can check how much pressure is built up on the tank against your gauge and know that your pressure relief valve is set and properly functioning. Once you ensure both settings are correct, put your valve handle back in the neutral position and then you're going to shut your PTO off. Part of your daily maintenance on the truck before you start your day, just check for any general leaks around the pump. Uh, your ball valve drains, want to check those. Have a look under the truck, check the motor for leaks, anything going on there. And then give a general walk around to the truck. I mean, want to make sure all your cam lock caps are locked and tight. Uh, all your hoses are contained. Anything in your hose trays you want to make sure is secure. Um, all your toolbox doors are shut and locked. And then check your sight glasses to make sure those are not cracked, broken, leaking. And generally those are things you want to look for. Each truck's going to be different, so just know what all you have and make sure everything is secure and safe. Next, we'll check the pumper scent can. This truck's not fitted with one, but we'll check that out on the workbench. If your truck is fitted with a pumper scent deodorizer can, one of the daily checks you want to do is just make sure you have deodorizer in the vaporizer can itself. That's as simple as taking the cap off, checking inside. If you need to add some, you add about a quart. You're just filling the bottom layer of the vaporizer can. One thing you can do when you're checking that at the same time is look for any obvious residual buildup of varnished oil or burnt pumper scent. If you find that, uh, go ahead and remove the whole pumper scent can and take it out and power wash it and then reinstall it, fill it back up and put your lid back on. Next part of your daily maintenance on the truck is flushing your vacuum pump out. This truck's fitted with a Massport flushing kit. For further instructions, see our other video. Last thing to check is to know what RPM your truck is running at for the proper pump speed. All trucks are different between manual and automatic transmissions, so you want to ensure you know where to operate your truck at. If you're unsure of your pump speed, you can use a digital handheld photo tachometer and check the speed at the pump shaft to know that you're running at the right RPM. And that's pretty much it for your daily checklist. Next, we're going to go over your weekly checks on the truck. Part of your weekly checklist, yet again, you want to flush your pump, and you can see that in our other video. Next, you're going to want to check the pre-filter. You want to again make sure your pump handles are neutral and all vacuum or pressure is bled off the tank. Then you're going to remove the wing nuts holding the lid on and remove the lid. Number one, inspect the gasket just to ensure that this is intact and is not worn or cracked. Next, we're going to go ahead and grab a wrench. This is a half inch wrench for this particular pre filter. You're going to remove the filter retainer plate and then pull your filter element out and inspect that to make sure it's clean. And at this time, you can go ahead and clean the filter out if it needs it. You can clean this with brake cleaner or put it in a pressure washer. Anything that's going to remove everything, make sure it's completely dry before you reinstall it. Make sure nothing is damaged or torn. So you don't want to get any contaminants through your vacuum pump. Once everything is clean and dry, you can go ahead and reinstall that. 
Make sure the filter's centered over your inlet port. Make sure that's tight without crushing the filter element. And then you're going to reinstall your lid. And again, make sure the lid is centered properly over the body of the pre-filter so your gasket gets a good seal. But it's always best after you're doing that to put the pump in the vacuum mode and pull some vacuum on it, which will suck the lid in and then snug your wing nuts down to get a good tight seat. And that's it for the pre-filter. Next, we'll take a look at the drive coupler, but we'll do that on the workbench. Here on the bench, we've got our drive coupler in front of us. Uh, this part of your weekly checks, we want to check the coupler and the gearbox setup. So I've removed the bolts from the coupler guard just for ease of inspection. What you want to check for is any rubber shavings or any damage to your drive coupler. Now this is what connects your gearbox to the vacuum pump shaft. This is a three shaft gearbox, so you want to check around the shafts to look for any noticeable leaks. If there are leaks, then you want to go ahead and tear your gearbox down and replace the shaft seals. As far as checking your oil, you want to remove the vent plug and bushing and then check your oil level in the gearbox. If it's low, go ahead and add some ADW90 gear oil. Now this particular gearbox is a Superior R500, so it only takes 24 ounces of gear oil, which is gonna put your oil level just about the bottom third of the shaft. Some drive systems may have a wood style coupler. This element, you wanna to check to ensure that you're not seeing any shavings. What'll happen is the teeth will eventually wear out on these from misalignment or hard startups. So you want to ensure you take a look at that, inspect it, and make sure that's intact. And that does it for the weekly check of your drive system. As part of your monthly checklist, we're going to look at the primary shutoff and the secondary shutoff and check the condition of the ball and seat. But we're going to do that on the workbench. Number one, you want to make sure you bleed off all the vacuum and pressure on your tank. Then you're going to get up on top of your truck and inspect your primary shutoff cage. Right on here on the bench, we have a primary disassembled just so it's easier to go through and look at. What you're gonna do is remove the wing nuts closure and then go ahead and pull your primary out of the tank. The cage will come out with the lid. You'll be able to see the ball stop, the float ball, and the seat. From there, I've already removed the gasket you want to make sure the gasket's intact and there's no visible cracks or wear or deterioration on it. A lot of times you will get a V-groove in the gasket from where it rides onto the collar. If that groove gets too deep, you want to replace the gasket because that can create a leakage on your primary lid to the seal. If you get buildup in your primary cage, you can actually get a ring of toilet paper or grease depending on what you're pumping. And that can actually hold the ball suspended close to the seat and cause the float ball to prematurely shut off. Always ensure that this is clean and you know the float ball is in there so as not to get any bypass when your tank fills up. So once everything's clean, you want to return your lid and cage back to the primary collar and then tighten your wing nuts down and snug them down good. You're going to pull a vacuum on your tank and that will help suck the primary lid closed onto your collar and then cinch your wing nuts down again to ensure you got a good seal. If you notice your wing nuts are corroded or the wing nuts are hard to get off, go ahead and replace the wing nuts and eye bolts at that time too. When you order a wing nut kit, it'll come complete with the wing nut, the eye bolt, your hinge pin, and your cotter pin. And that's your check for the primary trap. Here on the bench, we have our secondary trap. We've taken off of a system, so it's a little easier to explain. This is a horizontal plug and play scrubber. There's several different types of scrubbers. You could have a vertical scrubber mounted up on your tank. There's horizontal scrubbers that are frame mounted, they're round, rectangular, whichever the case, uh, they all pretty much function the same way. This will have a float shut off in it, so as part of your monthly maintenance, you want to remove the lid or cage, inspect your ball, make sure the seat's on there properly and intact and everything seals properly. Have a look inside your scrubber and clean it out as necessary. All the scrubbers are fitted with a drain, so as part of cleaning, you want to ensure that your ball valve is open and however you're pressure washing through the scrubber, you're getting plenty of material at the bottom. Once you've cleaned everything out and inspected everything, you're ready for reassembly again. Make sure you have a good gasket and everything is intact. 
can go ahead and reinsert your float ball and line up your connection. And then reinstall your bolts and tighten those down. And then once you're done with your final checks, you can pull a vacuum on the system and then go ahead and snug these bolts down again to make sure you get a good seal. Next is part of your monthly checks. You should take a look at your vacuum and pressure relief valve settings again and ensure that your gauge is operating properly. Also, you're gonna to wanna to check and clean your pre-filter element again. It's important to check these because they can come out of adjustment over time. Two other things for the monthly checklist are the hoses on your tank and your sight glasses. Over time, you'll get a buildup on the sight glasses, so you'll wanna go ahead, pull those out, clean the bowls, and then inspect your gasket at that time. Make sure there's no cuts, grooves, uneven wear in it. If there are, I would just go ahead and replace it. Then when you reassemble your sight glass, you wanna make sure you get the glass evenly in the center of it. And tighten it down, pretty hand tight. And then again, that one, when you pull vacuum on the tank, you can go back and re-snug that down a little bit. For the hoses, over time, these could get oil saturation and heat and it could degrade the internal surface of the hose. It'll still feel rigid on the outside, but your hose lining can actually start breaking away and sucking shut and deteriorating. Typically, if you find black rubber chunks inside your pre-filter screen, that's probably coming from your hose somewhere. The main hoses to deteriorate first are usually between the vacuum pump and your oil separator because those see the most heat. And then the next would be the hose between your inlet your pre-filter and your scrubber. Because when you're pressure offloading, you're blowing back through those and they'll see a lot of heat and oil. As part of your monthly check on your pumper scent can, you wanna take the lid off and look for any burnt oil residue or burnt pumper scent residue and keep your pumper scent filled to the proper level. The reason why this is important is to know your truck and how everything functions. Also equally important to know is how to maintain and take care of everything on your truck. Having a good knowledge of your truck and keeping up with the maintenance on it will prolong the life of your pump and truck. For more information regarding your pump, please visit MassPortPump.com or contact us by using the information on this screen.